Welcome to one of the most remarkable aircraft of the Second World War. In fact, one of the most remarkable and iconic aircraft ever in the history of aviation. The wooden wonder, the de Havilland Mosquito. Two Merlin engines and an airplane made of balsa wood, basically. So if you can imagine your car, which has got a lot of composites in it and things like that, your car owes an awful lot towards the technology that originated with this aircraft. Effectively, Geoffrey de Havilland came up with the idea of said, why don't we just make a mold? We make a mold and just glue the airplane together. And in order to develop the glues to glue the airplane together, they effectively were designing early composites. And from that composite industry stemmed everything that we have now. But let's get back to what the aircraft can actually do. Design-wise, it was remarkable, but because it was so light and it had not one, but two Merlin engines strapped to it, it was incredibly fast. Now, not just the speed element of it, but the fact that it could carry an enormous bomb load. Because this aircraft was a reconnaissance aircraft, it was a passenger aircraft, it was a bomber, it was a low-level bomber and ground attack aircraft, and it was a pursuit fighter. That was always assuming that anybody else could catch up with it to try and shoot it down. Because it was so fast that many variants of this aircraft never had any defensive armament whatsoever. Simply their speed and high altitude would get them out of trouble. They used to actually have a regular transport service from London to Stockholm using the Bombay. They would put VIPs three at a time in the Bombay and transport them on a scheduled service to Stockholm during the war, which was of course neutral. And it was reported that on one occasion, the RAF squadron leader who turned up in his outfit and everything else, went to the Lufthansa counter in Stockholm and said, could I buy a return ticket to Berlin, please, sir? And the German said with uh, a sense of irony and a rather notable sense of humor, yes, sir, but for you, there are no returns. Anyway, this aeroplane could carry, if it was gonna go to Germany and come back, it could carry twice the bomb load of a B-17 and fly twice as fast. So that gives you a clue as to its capabilities. Unbelievably maneuverable. Its one problem was its controllability. These engines are absolutely massive. And if one of the engines should fail, which of course they did from time to time, you had to fly the airplane very, very fast to maintain directional control. And it was a bit of a handful on landing. Give you a clue how fast you needed to fly the airplane, a minimum of 170 miles an hour if an engine went out, otherwise you were going to die on landing because you'd lose control of the aircraft. So given that, given that you had to respect the limitations of the airframe and the manoeuvring speeds involved, this was an unbelievable aircraft. And I would want to fly one if I was in the RAF in the Second World War, over a Spitfire, over a Lancaster, over anything, because on this one, you were definitely coming back.